All right, I'm did this three times because the other time I was showing pictures on Facebook because I accidentally hit the stop recording button. Close the door. Screw it. And yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Um, hey guys, how's it going? It's um Thursday, March twenty sixth, two thousand twenty, at ten fifty p.m. Um, today um I'm gonna tell you a story that happened ten years ago today um and that was um going to my first ever national hockey league game so yeah um I, this t might be a bad telling story but i just feel like telling it i've always wanted to share this story like i tried doing it a couple years ago like 20 like january 2018 it didn't go so well um yeah so um, hopefully this will be the right time to do it um got my dad's Oilers jersey and I'll show you the autographs later um yeah so I'll get started with the story I guess um I went to this game with my dad and my uncle so yeah um I, what happened um he we he got the news that um my uncle got tickets to the Oilers and Ducks game on March 26 um so he called my mom or dad and tell tell us that we're going to come you guys are coming to Edmonton um for an Oilers game. My dad was excited. I was excited. But I didn't care for too much for hockey back then, but I was excited though. Um because I love hockey now, but yeah, I was pretty excited. I'm you know, going to Edmonton watching a live hockey game. That's pretty cool, man. Who doesn't love live hockey for a hockey fan? Um but yeah, um, so I remember early March, I had a dentist appointment, um, my dad said, if, my parents said, if you're good at the dentist, you are going to Edmonton, if you're not good at the dentist, we ain't going to Edmonton, so I was good at the dentist just for that, just for that, so I can save our trip for Edmonton, and my dad was able to get time off of work too, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, March 25th, um, that night I had to go to bed a little earlier, just like, so I, I knew I had to get up really early in the morning, because that's when our flight was going to take off, um, yeah, remember I wasn't really feeling good last night, but, because I, remember the old, um, Rice Krispies cocoa cereal, I don't know if they still make those, but, and I was playing, um, um, Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube, because I left it out, like, on the table for a while, and it made me sick, Oh, yeah, oh, that was nasty, that's nasty looking at old soggy cereal, but anyways, uh, I, we're still going, though, because that, that just made me sick, not because I was actually sick, because that just was sick, I had a weak stomach, I still do somewhat, um, so yeah, I went to bed early, got up super early, like at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. Um, yeah, so my mom and sister drove me and my dad to the airport. And we give a hug saying, have fun. So we boarded the plane, um, took off, which was awesome. I was a little nervous at first, but I just realized it's awesome. I got to look at the sky view of the city at nighttime, and, uh, yeah, I was wondering, like, maybe we could see New Germany, Nova Scotia, and that's way too far, yeah, it was, New Germany, Nova Scotia, that's where, um, I used to live in Nova Scotia, like, when I was, like, my first four years on, on this planet, and yeah, um, no, North Scotia is a beautiful province. It's a beautiful province, by the way. But anyways, we're not talking about that. Um, I believe the flight from Winnipeg to Edmonton is like two hours. I could be wrong. Because I know it's like a 14-hour drive. Or a little longer. I don't know. It's around there, but... um, So, I, we, there was like TVs on the headboard. Like the head rests on the chairs or whatever. And we got... I don't, did we order breakfast? I can't remember, but... Yeah, so I watched TV, I fell asleep a little bit, and yeah, flew over Saskatchewan to see, like, um, Regina and 
Saskatoon, Moose Jaw, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Probably didn't see it that well because it was so dark, but... So yeah, we finally landed to Edmonton, um, at the Edmonton airport, um, everyone got up to get their baggages, you know, it took a while, um, so it was finally our turn to get out, and, yeah, so when we first got to the airport, we saw my, un my uncle, he had a tray in his hand with, like, two coffees and a hot chocolate from Tim Hortons, and, uh, so we got it, I got my hot chocolate, we we hugged each other, saying, "Hey, how's it going, buddy?" Yeah, we're I, we were excited to see him. Um, and yeah, so I took a sip of my hot chocolate, and I kind of spilled it on my Oilers hoodie. Um, and I kind of got a little bit paranoid. Oh my god, I spilled hot chocolate on my jersey. Oh, oh they're gonna be so mad. And I was getting paranoid, and they saw it. Oh, it's all good, buddy. We can watch it at home. So we got my to my uncle's car. Um. So we drove to his old house, and we saw this Walmart. Um, because I just said, well, that's a nice Walmart. And it's because it was kind of a big-looking Walmart. But, you know, we saw a Welcome to Edmonton sign, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we got to his house, saw my, saw my cousins and aunt. I was excited to see them. And we took my cousins to, like, daycare or school, whatever. I can't really, uh, remember. And we... No, actually, first, uh, we got... We went out for breakfast first. To this pancake place. We got pancakes or waffles, whatever. It was pretty cool. And the waitress or waiter saw my... Our Oilers gear. Are you guys going to the game tonight? I was like, yep. We were excited. Um... But, yeah... So I got pancakes, apple juice, and we took my cousins to daycare. Um, yeah, and I asked if we can go to Burger King for like a milkshake, and I and to said okay. I got a chocolate milkshake, and ugh, I'm not a fan of those actually. It's too strong for me. And then they gave me a strawberry milkshake instead because I remember had the little chunks. Oh, I hate those. I like strawberry flavor, but I don't like the. Little chunks. But anyways, um... Yes, yeah, so we got to his house, um... We, like, for a while, we watched him play his video game. Like, his crab fishing game. They, they get, like, they're on the boats and they... Have, like, the cages or whatever. Throw them in the ocean and get the crabs or lobsters. That's a cool game. Um... Yeah. So later, we drove to Rexall Place. Um, in Northlands, Edmonton. I don't know what area that is. I heard it's not the best area in Edmonton. That's what I heard. Um, but yeah. Um, so we got to Rexall Place and you saw a little the ducks practicing. Like here, I got a picture of that. Okay, I'm, gonna I'm gonna open the kiss. Hope it didn't stop the boom. Perfect. Um, all right. So here's the. Jesus, she's screen recorder. Okay, here's the ducks practicing. I think that's uh. The coach, Randy Carlisle. Um, there's um, Jonas Hill, or the goalie. I think that's uh, George Peros because of his mustache, or that might be Mike Brown. I don't know. No clue who these guys are. You can't see them from behind. I don't think we were supposed to do that, actually, sneak in, but we didn't care. It's a nice arena, man. I wish they still play at Rexall Place, but Rogers Place is lit. There's the old Oilers GM, Steve Tamalini. My uncle called him the boss. Yeah, that's him signing my dad's jersey, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's my dad with the Wayne Gretzky statue. There's my dad with another picture of my dad with the Wayne Gretzky statue. All right, here's the... Um, I think this is during the pregame warm-ups of the game. Because um, you see pucks on the ice, see people there. Yeah. And there's my dad with a couple guys who work for the Oilers. I don't know who they are. Alright, um, there's my, there's me, young me, that's my old Oilers hoodie, there's my dad on the left, my uncle to the right. Um, inside Rexall Place before the game, there's me and my dad in front of the Oilers locker room, which is lit. Alright, this is during the pregame warm-ups at the game, there's Jeff Deloria, the goalie, Taylor Chorney, Sean Horkoff, uh, and another player to the left, I don't know who that is on the right. I think that's Dubnik, Devin Dubnik, yeah, because it's the goalie stick. Alright, here's Devin Dubnik and Gilbert Brule. 
I took a picture of some Oilers banners because there's the Western Conference champions of the 06 season when they went to the finals lost to the Hurricanes. And there's the 92 banner, the thing one of the division. Here's another picture of the warm-ups. Um, I have no clue who they are. I think that's uh, Stortini, Zach Stortini. I don't know. I don't know who that player is. I can't really tell from here. There's the old Sportsnet logo. I kind of like that logo. All right, got some Anaheim Ducks players. There's uh, Kyle Chipchera, Ryan Carter, Dan Sexton, Brendan McKelson. I don't know who that is uh, right there. There's another uh, photo of the Oilers. There's uh, Dustin Penner, number 27, Ethan Morrow, Taylor Chorney, Fernando Persani. I think that's Patrick O'Sullivan, um, Jason Strudwick. No clue who these guys are because I can't really see from here. Um, Ryan Patoli. Ryan Patoli. God, I kind of hate. Alright. I hit pause. Sorry. Um. Okay, there's me and my uncle. There's a couple Oilers in the front. There's Tom Gilbert on the left. And we took a picture of some random guy's uh, sign. I think it says... Can't really read that thing. It says, yeah, it does say something about trade Horkoff for a pile of pucks. Eh, guess that guy wasn't a Horkoff fan. All right, here's more pictures of Zach Stortini in his truck, um, signing my dad's and my uncle's jerseys. And he got some fighting technique tips, <laughs> um, because Stortini was an enforcer. And there's my uncle's jersey. That's sexy. Another photo during the warm ups. There's Matt Bolesky over there, um, Devin Dumnik. Fernando Persani and a couple kids there. I don't know. I don't know who that player. I don't know who that player is right there, with the right-handed guy. Another picture of Jeff Delorie, the goalie. Uh, Sean Horkoff. There's a photo of young me. Um, uh, seven-year-old me in front of the Oilers locker room. That door. Oh, that's awesome. Wish all teams had something like that. All right, this um during the game. I think sometime during the third period, the Oilers call the timeout or whatever. Or Anaheim, yeah, I think Oilers timeout because they're all gathered gathered around the bench, um, having discussions. Coach giving some tips. Hort Horkoff, Aaron Johnson, and yeah, it's Curtis McElhinney, the Anaheim goalie. We gotta fight. There's Mike Brown kicking Dean Arsini's ass. That was the fastest fight I've ever seen in hockey. That's the fastest fight I've ever seen. It was right after uh, Corey Perry's. Second power play goal in the um, third period, which ended up being the game winner. I heard the reason why he went after Arsini because he, they tried to, um, he was, um, was sorry, I can't talk well. Like going after Bobby Ryan, I heard. Yeah, I think I saw that. Or we might have been in the concourse, I can't remember. I do remember this fight though. And the Paris Stortini fight early in the second. Alright, this is on our way home from Edmonton to Winnipeg. There's another photo. I don't know where we're over. God, that's cool. There's my head, my little head. Okay, I'm on NHL.com right now. I'm just looking at the scoring summary because I would just feel like showing the goals. Um, all right, here's the stats of that game. Shots are 40 to 36 in favor of the Ducks. Face-off percentage. Where's the face-off percentage? I bet Anaheim. I know Anaheim major won majority of the face-off. I've heard they had a higher face-off percentage. Um. Ducks are two for four with the power play. Oilers are one for seven. Not good. God, that power, God their power plays were horrible in that game, I remember. Especially the first one in the second period. Um, Robert Nielsen almost cost us a goal. Um, all right, penalty minutes, 36 to 40. Oof. Whoa, Edmonton leads it? And I took more penalty. Oh, that makes sense. Well, Whitney, because I heard Whitney got a little, like, made a scene at the end. Um, hits are 11 12 in favor of the Oilers. I remember that big one by Dean Arsini on Nick Benino in the second. I remember that was that was a good hit. Um, blocks are 13 to, or thir 18 to 13 in favor of the Oilers. Um, giveaways 19 to 10 in favor of the Oilers. Jeez. Our right, scoring summary George Peros is third from Ryan Carter and Matt Bolesky at 8 18. Made it 1 0 Anaheim. 1-0 Anaheim going to the dressing room. Um, Oilers tied it up. Gilbert Brule 16th of the year from Tom Gilbert and Ryan Whitney at 5:52 Made it 1-1. Third period, uh, Corey Perry 
is 25th on the power play from Timu Solani and ne Scott Niedermeyer at 12.30 of the third period. Um, 95 seconds later, um, I think... Sorry, I'm... Yeah, 95 seconds later. I could be wrong. Sorry about that. But uh, Corey Perry adds a second of the game. 26th of the season on the power play from Timu Solani and Lubomir Viznovsky, the former Oiler. Oilers um, cut the lead in half... At 1940, with Mark Antoine Pouliot six of the year on the power play from Ryan Patoni and Ryan Whitney, and YouTube didn't show the goal on the recap. Like, why didn't you show the goal? Show all the goals, NHL YouTube, for God's sake. But yeah, um, here are the penalties. This is weird. I know. I don't feel like reading them. Out. Okay, Edmonton took the first penalty. Jeff Deloria interference against George Peros. Um, served by Zach Stortini at 14-17. Right. George Peros fighting against Zach Stortini. Zach Stortini fighting against George Peros at 2-37. Ryan Carter delaying game puck over glass. I'm not going to read all this. Three stars. Perry, Solani, Deloria. Yeah, Deloria played good in that game. All right. So yeah, let's show you the photos, uh, stats on NHL.com, and yeah, um, yeah, so we're at the game, like, we stayed all the game, I remember, um, I remember George Perro scored, like, crap, they scored, yeah, it was kind of boring, too, I, was, I kind of find it boring to watch, and I, like, when there, when there was, like, a stoppage in play, like, you know, the referees and linesmen blow the whistle, it felt like they were blowing the whistles in my ears, oh, I hated that. Made me feel uncomfortable. I had to eat my popcorn like this, I remember. Ugh, I was covering my ears at the same time. I, didn't, I don't think I had a problem with the music, though. But yeah, um... And the end of the period buzzer, I did not like either. I was kind of loud a little bit. Like the green lights at the end. Um, I went Edmonton score by Gilbert Brule in the second period. I didn't think the horn was going to be that loud, actually. The goal horn... So, really slap shot um, from the other side of the ice. Glove side on Curtis McElhinney. The whole crowd, the whole building went insane. Um, so, I was covering my ears. And I kind of recovered, like, let go a little bit when the horn sounded. It sounded like the, the actual air horns were in my ear, too. God, I hated that. My dad and uncle didn't have a problem with it. How do you not come in your ears? How do they not know that like, it's going to burst your eardrums any second now? But yeah, and I had to cover my ears at the end too when Pouliot scored. Jeez. Back in the day, I bet the Oilers had the loudest goal horn in the NHL. I, they had to. Maybe they could still be a little bit. I've never been to Rogers Place yet, but jeez, that's so loud, man. I feel bad for I feel bad for Oilers fans who had to go through that. I like the sound of their goal horn. It suits the team very well. I really like that horn, but Jeez, so why does it have to be so loud though? Why can't it be like Winnipeg's horn? You can like you could it'll still be kind of loud somewhere, but you, not as loud though. You can hardly hear it. Still though, but yeah, um, yeah, I was not really happy kid back then. When Perry scored, um, two goals. I was like, Ugh. I was getting a little bit angry, a little bit like a little pissy and sad, and I was tired too, so I kind of laid on my dad's lap. I remember. Or this side, um, and like later in the third period, they like you know like the fan cams they showed uh me, me, on their jumbotron, like doing like this, and all the people were laughing like, geez, that was embarrassing. I don't, I don't remember if that actually happened, but yeah, I can believe that though. I'm trying to look for that full game, man. Like the full game, Ducks Oilers, March twenty sixth, two thousand ten. Still looking for that game. P probably won't, but. Jeez, um, I really want to find that game, but anyways, uh, yeah, and at the end of the game, I kind of, like, we was, we stopped at the Oilers store, we got a jersey for my sister, and yeah, and we got out of Rexall Place, we took a taxi home, we got to my uncle's place, I was really tired, disappointed the Oilers lost, and I was crying because I was homesick, and I slept with my dad on the couch, yeah.
I was kind of homesick. I, I, I was. I'm not used to that being way that far. Like from home. But yeah, um, I had a good weekend too. Saturday I had a good day. Um, Sunday we went to. No, um, Sunday we left in the afternoon to go home to Winnipeg. And Saturday we went to Tuck Chuck E. Cheese. I remember. Didn't. I had an okay time there. And on Saturday we went to uh, this water park. It, like, it wasn't big. It was like a gym or whatever I think. And uh, they had only had two water slides. Yeah. So yeah, I know this is a bad story. Like it's a good story, but I have a bad way of telling it. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm just gonna end the video here, people. I want to go to bed soon, and yeah, have a good night, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it.